Hello Netherworld residents, I'm King Link and this is my last look and review of Disgaea 5. Now I'm going to start a new goal here. I'm aiming for 200 subscribers. If you haven't subscribed yet, this is a perfect time to join the team. Thank you for considering it. In addition, as a matter of disclosure, I reached out to Nippon Ichi America asking for a copy of the game and they gave it to me. Now this does not affect my review, but I heavily appreciate it and wish to thank them properly for providing me a copy. I'm also announcing it here so it's clear to the viewer uh, as a matter of disclosure. Now Disgaea 5 is the latest in the Disgaea franchise. It's one of the largest and most content filled games in the series. This is a series I've been playing since the PlayStation 2 days, so of course I am a fan. I'll try to move through this game quickly as there's a lot to say. Now the written review in the description will have far more information and go deeper into it. Graphically, this series has always had kind of the same look to it. While the graphics look great on HD monitors and Ultra HD, it is what you see on the screen. 2D sprites. In addition, the series uses the same sprites for generic characters each game, such as the warrior or the mage. But Seraphina and Kilia, for instance, and the rest of the story characters all look great here, and they are unique. Now I'm going to dive into the item world here and go down a number of levels, but check out the graphics as I do. And I'll be turning on the ally and enemy effects showing the animations for the attacks, so I can try to dazzle you with the animations in the game. The story in Disgaea 5 is decent. It's actually pretty good, but it has a rather big caveat in my opinion. As I played through this game a second time, I found myself getting bored early on in the game. And the fact is the first third of the game, about five chapters in total, is rather slow. The main character, Seraphina, the red-headed overlord that you'll see me use, and Kilia, her vassal, again I'll use him in the item world, go meet a bunch of people in slightly boring locations. It's not really that exciting as an opening. However, once that first third is over, I really like Disgaea 5. Every character gets some really good character development, and there's three villains that get a ton of development as well. I really love the story. But it's after that slow opening, and it takes a decent amount of time to get past it, about 10 hours or a little bit more. That's a shame. Even in those early chapters though, the lighthearted story works, and honestly the humor makes me chuckle. I find a lot of this game funny, including Seraphina's running gag of shooting pretty much everybody. The story is good, and it just takes time to find its feet. On the other hand, the gameplay in Disgaea 5 is excellent from the first moment, as it has always been in the series. Disgaea 5 benefits from the numerous games that came before it, which it borrows from heavily and adds in its own refinement on the series. Disgaea 5 is a strategy RPG with a lot of focus on the strategy elements, as you can see in my gameplay. You move your units for your turn, can order attacks, execute them, even order and move more units in, and then the enemy gets their chance. Strategy is crucial for this game, and you can tackle almost any challenge thrown your way from using tactical skill or leveling your characters up. Of course, there's a limit to how weak you can be to pass challenges or enemies, Using a good strategy will usually allow you to get a little bit farther than just throwing random attacks at the enemy. Now, Disgaea 5 also gives the player to beat enemies through numerical superiority. At least that's what I'm calling it. I actually power leveled a little bit to beat this game, and I enjoy that. While the game really only requires characters to be about a hunt level 100, my party is clearly in excess of that, rendering some late story battles kind of easy. The ability to do this is my favorite part of Disgaea, though. The player can grind levels, of course, in any RPG, but also in this game they can power level, and if done effectively will gain quite a bit of power quickly. The fun part of Disgaea for me is, see, is similar to why I play incremental games like Cookie Clicker. I love watching the numbers go higher and higher, and at the end of the game I was able to reach level uh, damage 100,000. Now that's six digits of damage. However, the end of the post game you're going to actually end up doing about 10 million in damage and attack. That's eight digits of damage if you're really following. Your character will slowly reach those levels over time and that's what really gets me excited. A lot of SRPGs such as Final Fantasy Tactics and South Park The Fracture Butthole, Snicker Snicker, uh, limits the player and has realistic power scales. This guy kind of flings that out of the window, allowing the player to reach just under level 10,000. 9,999 to be precise. In addition, there's a lot of ways players can power up their characters, not just from leveling. 
there's equipment that can level itself up. That's why I'm in the item world, so it's, uh, to level up a piece of equipment. Skill levels, abilities, squads, and spells. Disgaea is all about that power gain, and that's what I really like here. Now, admittedly, that's not for everybody, and if you want to tackle the story, you can mostly proceed through it normally. There might be some grinding and a couple runs through the item world required just to get the right levels, but for the most part, the game plays normally. And admittedly, grinding is never a good thing, as I've said previously, but here, it seems to be kept to a minimum in the main game. It's a post-game, though, that really starts pushing the, that number manipulation, as well as a decent sum of content. Now, there is the item world. There's a board game called Class World, the Land of Carnage, bonus maps, tons of uh, extra uh, characters that you can earn, and more that the player can tackle after beating the game. In addition, as this is Disgaea 5 Complete, the Complete comes out and you'll get all the DLC that was available for PlayStation 4, which is just more maps, characters, and more to play. And there's even more, of course. There's curry cooking, there's alchemy, there's research, there's quests, and more, and I don't have time to go into everything, unfortunately. Disgaea 5, though, is the largest and most feature-rich version of Disgaea yet, and while I'm sure the 6th game will potentially beat it, this is a great place to start your journey. I personally put in over 60 hours in the PlayStation, uh, PC version for mostly just the story, and I've hit at least 100 hours on the PlayStation 4 version, doing about half of the post-game content. Now, not everything here is perfect. I'll admit the controls with the thumbsticks are a little bit weak. Um, the D-pad, of course, works much better. The UI can be a little bit hard to read which direction units are facing, and that is important for uh, strategy and tactics. There's no network features on the PC, though admittedly I didn't use them that much on PlayStation 4. It is something that is lacking, and people have been upset about that. And finally, I find the always spawn tiles that appear in the story mode extremely annoying, and I don't know why they were added. But all of those are kind of minor features and issues. Disgaea 5 isn't the perfect game, admittedly, but it is such a content-rich game, and if you like the numerical power fantasies that I've described, where your character keeps getting more powerful as you go, and you see that growth clearly, Disgaea 5 excels there. If you want a humorous story as well, it does very well there too, but like I said, it is a little slow at the beginning. Now if you're interested in the series, you can start with Disgaea PC. I think that's the best story in the series, and it is a good game, but I also find it a little bit old for its, my taste, and the combat is a little stale to me, it was made for the PlayStation 2. That might be fine for new fans, but personally I think Disgaea 5 is my personal favorite, just for the amount of gameplay, features, and content that it provides. You really can't go wrong with either of these games, but I personally recommend Disgaea 5 for those who are curious, just for the wealth of uh, content. I award Disgaea 5 Complete a 4.5 out of 5. It is a strong game, and has a lot of content, but rather than just bogging a player down in mindless content, there's a firm progression with it, and the player will have constant goals along the way, rather than one long grind in one dungeon. The grind is real here though, and even with power leveling, you will spend a lot of time just working on improving levels or abilities or power or just going through mindless pr uh, processes to get that power. But honestly, it's still a fun experience outside of that, and I always love looking at the next challenge I'm trying to complete. And that's really Disgaea 5. Thank you again to Nipponichi America for providing me a copy, and thank you to all my subscribers. I know you are a big part of the reason that they gave me one. Coming up next, well, let's pretend Thanksgiving didn't go so well and some bad stuff happened. Things around here got pretty messy. So, we're going to have to clean it up. Yep, Viscera cleanup detail is coming up next. Can cleaning really sustain a whole game? We'll see. Until then, I'm King Link, and thank you very much for watching.